are these people? Oh my goodness. What? What is going on here? What in, what in tarnation? But what in God's name? This man in the middle, if you don't know, his name is David McBride. He's an Australian whistleblower. Let's try sharing the screen with you. What's a happening with this guy? So David McBride is a whistleblower. I think yeah. we've talked about him before. He's a big friend of Misty's. He's a friend of the show, friend of the network. Friend of Assange. He was a mm -hmm. uh, Australian SAS soldier who was then a who then became a lawyer. He blew the whistle on soldiers committing war crimes, and naturally, he's the one going to prison. So, it's just yeah, kind of a do. funny, quick hit that we see here. Now, this is a long video. We're not going to watch the whole thing, but uh, from Boy Boy. Uh, our boy is, our friend is going to jail. That's the guy in the middle, so. This is our mate, David McBride. Now, it might look like he's having fun, but sadly, this is our last shower together as best friends, because David here mm. is going to prison for life. He's what you'd call a whistleblower. You all know what a whistle sounds like. Now, he's a soldier who served in Afghanistan who realized that Aussie soldiers were committing some of the most heinous war crimes imaginable and his superiors were covering it up. So he told the public about it. And thanks to David's bravery, nothing happened. Oh, the poppers! Uh, all the war criminals and generals are free, all the politicians are free. David's the one that's going to jail for the crime of telling us about it. Oh. So, how long are you going to jail? <laughs> Five years. A good icebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that laugh. I don't know. I don't know. It could be the rest of my life. So that and that brings things into a, a sharp focus because you kind of think this could be the last time I go to Bondi Beach, last time I watch a movie, last time I play PlayStation. You want to come up? Oh. <laughs> if I go inside, I want to try to get him to uh, be my cellmate. We got to get him to whistleblow. <laughs> <laughs> But, the drug dogs, you can whistle oh, over drug yeah. dogs. False positive. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> On purpose. Uh, you, you could infiltrate the drug dogs. Now, to understand how David got into this position, we've got to understand what brought him to Afghanistan, what brought anyone to Afghanistan. And to do that, we need to go back to the 70s when Afghanistan was really cool. So, again, I don't want to show this whole video. Um, basically, again, he... he yeah. Found war crimes. He reported war crimes. But what I wanted to do was read a couple of uh, an article that I brought from John Kiriakou in our. Um, I'll link it in the chat for people. In the, watch it after this. It's in. It'll be in the link after in the description afterwards. Also on in the Substack. Um, okay. Consortium News Indie Media Award honoree published an exclusive from John Kiriakou, ex CIA whistleblower, who really explains exactly what what happened here and so kiriaku's article starts uh, as the heroism of david mcbride please support uh consortium news we're going to bring another piece from them next about uh about julian assange and they're going there they're now live to cover the hearing that we're going to talk about next as well and david mcbride was a huge supporter of julian assange also <laughs> australian so you can see um, there were a lot of, of similarities in how no one would listen to his story, how he it was impossible to get Australian um, politicians to side with him. So let's just see. By 2014, McBride had compiled a dossier into profound command failings that saw examples of potential war crimes in Afghanistan, overlooked, and other soldiers wrongly accused. On Tuesday, he was sentenced to nearly six years in jail, five years and eight months. So, sometimes a whistleblower does everything right. He or she makes a revelation that's clearly in the public interest. This revelation is clearly a violation of the law. And then he or she is even more clearly abused by the government. It would be if these stories always had, it would be great if these stories always had happy endings. Unfortunately, they don't. In this case, the whistleblower 
the hero Australian David McBride, has been sentenced to five years and eight months in prison for telling the truth. He will not even be eligible for parole for 27 months. David McBride is a former British Army officer and a lawyer with the Australian Special Forces who blew the whistle on war crimes committed by Australian soldiers in Afghanistan, specifically the killing of 39 un unarmed Afghan prisoner prisoners, farmers, and civilians in 2012. <coughs> After failing to raise a response through official channels, McBride shared the information with the Australian Broadcasting Company, or ABC, which published a series of major reports based on the material. The ABC broadcast in 2017 led to a major inquiry that upheld many of the allegations. And despite this, the ABC and its journalists themselves came under the threat of prosecution for their work on the story. The ABC offices in Sydney were raided by the National Police, but in the end the government did not prosecute an ABC journalist because it was not in the public interest. But McBride himself, however, was prosecuted for dissemination of official of information. Now, you did you cover this at all, Reef? Have you ever covered the McBride case on Ina News? Yeah, we covered uh, we covered it under I think we're all Spartacus. Look for mm -hmm. that in the oh, I'll link it in chat for people and send it to you for the description and shit. But yeah, it's. It's a thing we covered a while back, a couple months ago, when when this case was starting to like when they found him guilty. Me. I think when they found you him know? guilty before the sentencing, yeah. which was this week, but or we're about to one of the two. Yeah, let's go back a few years. So, let me Mc, find that. McBride at the time already was a seasoned attorney. After studying for a second law degree at Oxford. <laughs> He joined the British military and eventually moved back to Australia, where he became a lawyer in the Australian Defense Forces, ADF. In that role, he had two tours in Afghanistan in 2011 and 2013. So while on deployment, McBride became critical of the terms of engagement and other regulations that soldiers were working under, which he felt were endangering military personnel for the sake of political imperatives determined elsewhere. Well, that sounds familiar. By 2014, McBride had compiled a dossier it said into profound command failings, like we said earlier, that saw examples of potential war crimes in Afghanistan overlooked, and of course, other so soldiers wrongly accused. My guess is those were the people that were probably looking to blow the whistle, and they were looking to get rid of them on the operation. His internal compl complaints were suppressed and ignored because that would have exposed the wrongdoings of the people at the top. McBride's reports also looked at other matters, including the military's handling of sexual abuse allegations. After his use of internal channels had proven ineffective, McBride gave his report to the police, and eventually, he contacted journalists at ABC. Now, ABC's Afghan files documented several incidents of Australian soldiers killing unarmed civilians, including children and question the prevalent warrior yep. culture in the Special Forces. Subsequent to McBride's disclosures, the behavior of other coalition Special Forces in Afghanistan also came under sustained investigation. So again, this guy reported and, and whistle blew and told, you know, tried to tell people at the top, hey, you had soldiers killing Afghan children. They didn't want to know from it, and they'd rather put this guy in jail for telling them. Mm -hmm. in, in many ways, McBride's reports went further than the issues identified by ABC. I mean, prevalent rumors that Australian troops were responsible for war crimes, Western world deaths in Afghanistan had left, led to calls for and get investigations. I would expect so. So, in November 2020, the Brereton Report, which was formerly called the Inspector General of the Australian Defence Force Afghan Inquiry Report, it was published, utterly vindicating yeah, McBride. Yeah, right. McBride and the ABC. Judge Paul Bre Brereton uh, found evidence of multiple incidents involving Australian personnel that had led to the 39 deaths. Among his rep recommendations were the investigation of these incidents for possible future criminal charges. 
There, of course, would be almost no criminal charges, however. We're now five years later, or more. At least there would be only one eventual criminal charge against one single soldier in the murder of Afghan civilians. There have been no charges against the officers who covered up the war crimes. Nope. Instead, though, yep. Instead, though, there would be serious charges against McBride for theft of government property, of course, the information, and for sharing with members of the press documents classified as secret. He faced life in prison. Now, what really pisses me off about this is I thought that when you were exposing a crime, like, this stuff, the sharing with members of the press, like, doesn't apply. It only applies if it's classified because it's not a crime. So, McBride's sentence illustrates the challenges that Australian whistleblowers face when reporting evidence of waste, fraud, abuse, illegality, or threats to public health or sa public safety. Well, first, just like in the United States, there are no protections for national security whistleblowers. David took his career and indeed his life into his hands when he decided to go public with his revelations, but what else could he do? And and you've if you watch his, any interviews with him, he he's absolutely convinced that he did the right thing, that that was the only thing to do, and that it will hopefully prevent future war crimes from happening because of what he exposed. Which um, is one of the reasons they like sent him to jail was because he's not showing any remorse. Right, we can, he, he can't be rehabilitated. So what's the point? Rehabilitated right. to, to sign so on to the, the current. Point? Well, that's the like, current thing. It's it's rehabilitated to accept the current thing. Yeah, he's never going to be rehabilitated to that. I can yeah. promise you. Yeah, it's like 1984 shit. Right. Um, Second, as in the United States, there well, is no affirmative defense. McBride, like Snowden, Jeffrey Sterling, Daniel mm -hmm. Hale, and like John Kiriakou himself, the author of this article, was forbidden from standing up in court and saying, yes, I gave the information to the media because I witnessed a war crime or a crime against humanity. What I did was in the public interest. Those words are never permitted to be spoken in a court in the United States or Australia. And he talks about recalling yeah. Nuremberg, and here's a photo of the... Nuremberg Trials from 1945, guarded by American military police, funny enough. The third, Australia is in dire need of some legal reforms. The judge in McBride's case said, said at sentencing that McBride had no duty as an army officer beyond following orders. That defense was attempted at uh -huh. Nuremberg, and it failed. I was only following orders. I remember orders. It was only something orders. Like that. Um, it's time for the Australian yeah. judiciary to get into the 21st century. There are a couple of points of light in this whole fiasco. Yeah. The Brereton Commission did indeed recommend that 19 members of the Australian Special Forces be prosecuted for war crimes. So far, one has been charged with a crime. He's accused of shooting and killing a civilian in a wheat field in Urzug... Uh, Urz Ruzgan, I province. I just butchered that three times. Get out. In 2012, blah blah blah. God bless you. And McBride will be allowed to appeal his conviction, but he won't be allowed to spend you know it out of jail on appeal. Still, any light at any other yeah. light at the end of the tunnel is likely an oncoming train rather than relief for the whistleblower. But the bottom line is this. There's a war against whistleblowers in Australia, just like there is in the United States. Indeed, Andrew Wilkie, who is a former Australian government intelligence analyst turned whistleblower and now a member of parliament, yep. mm, says that the, quote, Australian government hates whistleblowers, unquote, and that it wanted to punish David McBride and send a signal to other government insiders to remain silent, even in the face of witnessing horrible crimes. I would say exactly the mm -hmm. same thing about the United States. Just ask a man by the name of Daniel Hale who recently got out of prison. Yep. 
John says, I'm proud to call David McBride a friend, and I know Misty would say the same. I know exactly what he's going through yep. right now, but his sacrifice will not be in vain. History will smile on him. Yes, the next several years will be tough. He'll be a prisoner. He'll be separated from his family, and when he gets out of prison, well into his 60s, he'll have to begin rebuilding his life. But he's right, and his government is wrong, and the future generations will understand and appreciate what he did for them. That's if they I even find right out. Away. Yeah, well, I don't... I am hopeful that John is correct, but I'm also a little skeptical, because I think that corporate media will go out of their way to try to smear him. And that... Yeah. It's... Man. So, here's John. He's a former CIA counterterrorism officer former senior investigator for the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He became the sixth whistleblower indicted by the Obama administration under the Espionage Act, a law designed to punish spies. He served 23 months in prison as a result of his attempts to oppose the Bush administration's torture program. Uh, yeah, he, he reported on waterboarding. Thanks, Obama. Yes, thanks. Thanks for that. And again, support our friends over <clears throat> at Consortium News. Kathy Vogan, Joe Loria, John Kiriakou, Patrick um, Lawrence writes for The Flautist. He also does some exclusives over here. They're one of the best of the best of the best. I, I, I love these people dearly. They cover Assange tremendously. Tremendous, tremendous coverage. Tremendous. All right, so you sent me something last night about David, and this is eight and a half minutes. This I want to watch because... This we started watching, and I was like, oh, this is good. We definitely need to show this. I think people will enjoy it. You know, he's put the speed to 1.21 gigawatt or whatever. 1.21 That's That's a fast as a bolt of lightning. Uh, okay. <laughs> you guys see the news coming out of Canberra? It's crazy. Take a read of this. Former ACT oh, yeah. public servant who climbed into a colleague's bed and raped her will be eligible for parole just four days after sentencing. Hader Ali, 38, received a jail term of more than two years when he appeared in the ACT Supreme Court on Thursday. He was ordered to serve a non-parole period of 17 months. But with the sentence backdated to take into account the time on remand, he will be eligible for release from custody next Monday. This one, teenage boy who raped a sleeping uh. friend of his Canberra home has avoided jail despite showing minimal insight into his offending and its impact on the victim. What about this? Rising sports star rapist dodges time in prison despite lack of remorse. A rising Canberra sports star who showed no remorse for the rape of a teenage girl has avoided time behind bars and inclusion on the child no sex remorse. offender register. Did you hear about this? Andrew Ralston, former AFP employee, <laughs> spared jail on Instagram child sex grooming charge. A former Australian Federal Police employee sent an 11 year old girl a message on Instagram including one saying, I want to see your nude body. Huh. It also reminds me about this thing that happened. Former Common Chero boss Peter Zadrovic dodges time behind bars after naked shootout. And this, Canberra father walks free after nearly nine months naked in custody shootout. over Moncrief kidnapping. Oh, a cowardly Canberra father who assaulted a man during an eight-hour torture session at Moncrief has walked free from court after spending nearly nine months in custody. Jesus what about Christ. this? Gunpoint rapist granted parole. An armed rapist and child sex offender who has been branded a high risk of committing more sex crimes has been rubber stamped for release at a secret parole hearing. Justice David Mossop in 2017 jailed Hadara for more than five years with a two year, eight month and two week non-parole period. Isn't the news coming out of Canberra just wild? And you know what all these rapists, pedophiles, torturers, kidnappers and groomers have in common? They're all people that the ACT Supreme Court Justice David Mossop thinks deserve less time in jail than war crimes whistleblower David McBride. That's insane! Ugh. That's ridiculous. I'm gonna stop that right there nope, so you they can all got, process. They all got less time in jail than McBride. Apart from the gunpoint rapist, the article says he got over five years in prison. Bitch is probably around the same or less than McBride was since five years and eight months. Fortunately, the article doesn't specify how long exactly Massa paid the gunpoint rapist, but he was out on parole after around three years. <sighs> okay. 
just in case it wasn't clear, Mossop, Little friendly the judge presiding over David McBride's case, was also the judge or the appellate judge in every case I just mentioned. Isn't it amazing that Mossop is more vindictive towards David McBride, a veteran, a former lawyer, a man who nobody will dare allege as a risk to anyone, than he is to steroid-using, gun-toting, repeat-offending, pedophile rapists branded at high risk of committing more sex crimes. In case you missed it, whistleblower David McBride has been sentenced to five years and eight months in jail, with two years and three months no parole, for his sick, violent, perverted, and self-satisfied crime of exposing war crimes and cover-ups of war crimes in Afghanistan. He is now officially the first Australian soldier to go to jail for their conduct in Afghanistan. Let that be a warning to all future potential whistleblowers next time you're frustrated about seeing government sanctioned murders. Don't try and report it. Don't foolishly expect accountability. Do not go after the deep state and think you can win. Do not be induced by their doublespeak about transparency and accountability and honour. Instead, go out, grab a gun, shove it in someone's face and rape them. Let off some steam. You'll likely face lesser consequences <laughs> oh, and fuck your God. life up less than if you're in front oh, of don't do that. <clears throat> American don't do intelligence that. community's favourite judge, David Mossop. This judgment should be his albatross. If you make decisions entirely out of line with pretty much not just every legal expert who doesn't die in Australia's intelligence community every second week, but Australian public opinion in general, you should fully expect to feel the weight of that on you in your day-to-day -day life. After all, we are meant to be in a democracy and it's very dangerous when our elite begin to forget that. Now, I have a lot to say about not just this judgment, but the successive judgments David Mossop made that went out of their way to deny even the smallest concessions to McBride. That will come in due course. I will also have a lot to say about all the wicked demon lawyers who made their living for the past few years trying to put a good man, a man that is far more impressive and honourable than themselves, in jail. Mm -hmm. The first I have to say, what does it serve putting McBride in jail? Put aside any legal, ethical or moral questions. They've already been comprehensively addressed by McBride's lawyers despite them being deprived of key evidence by both Oz government spooks and our national broadcaster, the ABC, who abandoned McBride in his time of need. Forget all that legal shit. Forget even the question about duty for now. Just mull on this. A man who the overwhelming majority of Australians think should never have been prosecuted is now going to jail for five years and eight months. Yep. That is a much longer sentence than anyone, even I think the government expected, the same government that whilst going on and on about how prosecution should be at arm's length, was instructing prosecution to push for jail time. This is dangerous for democracy. And I'm not even going into the chilling effect it'll have on future whistleblowers. Like, just think about it this way. In the wake of all the crazy shit COVID brought out in everyone, in a time when social cohesion and trust in government is at record lows, when it seems like every second person you meet has a martyr complex. This is very bad for perceptions and the political enfranchisement of Australians, throwing a man who most Australians think is a hero in jail. I know McBride's case Real might pat. seem like a small Canberra elite mm. issue. It's not. Videos of him are reaching millions. Research. Articles about him are the most commonly read on any given day. The Australian government would be very, very foolish to underestimate the mimetic power of the fact that the only soldier going to prison for their conduct related to the Afghanistan war is a war crimes whistleblower. The decent people in Australia's government and bureaucracy <laughs> should be just as gravely concerned about the burgeoning distrust of government in Australia. They need to reckon with the growing inability of the professional managerial class to act in accordance with the views of the majority of Australians. No one encapsulates that divide more so than Justice David Mossop in his McBride judgment. Oh, if the power of the international creeper. intelligence community continues to subvert the centuries old and fairly yeah. simple concepts like open justice in Australia, it won't just be McBride who pays the price. It'll be all of us. I mean, do we really want to end up with a political system that resembles the US? This is a really, really, really <laughs> big turning point for Australia. No one cares about your stupid e-safety commission and shit, Albo. No one cares about your manufactured culture war crises. You're degrading democracy with this bizarre info paternalism. But you can never build trust or faith in institutions by incompetently preventing Australians from knowing the truth. Or by following the US model of Democrats propping up culture war crap. The government has no ability to address them in the first place. And then grandstanding on them and pretending the government can solve it? People can see through this shit. And eventually, you will end up looking like ScoMo, continually demonstrating your contempt for normal Australians, as if they're too stupid to comprehend the basics of government. Instead, have the tiniest bit of courage. Start following the majority opinion a little bit more. This could have been a non-issue. McBride's prosecutions could have been dropped in an instant. Instead, David McBride will be an albatross around the necks of campus institutions for a very long time. He is now a symbol of the disconnect between Australia's political class and the views of normal Australians. I'll have a longer video on McBride's sentence and the judgment very soon, and I would organise some sort of student protest to free McBride. But I keep getting accused of being racist towards Canberrans for my slogan, from Lake Burley Griffin to the headquarters of the AFP, David McBride will be free. We've been making videos about <laughs> McBride for years, and I get them from old trope, but I think it's because it is the most visible example of the tentacles of the American Fuck deep state as McBride, I know you can't see this video from jail, but for the love of God, somebody put it on a USB and smuggle it up their ass so they could show him. Five years and eight months might seem like a long time. <laughs> no, Don't worry, two years as long of a time as eternity, which is exactly how long Justice David Mossop and Prosecutor Patricia McDonald will be spending in hell. So good. <laughs> so good. I know. Good job, Jordies. Nobody you shove wonder, You wonder why that guy gets his house firebombed. Nobody shove, right a, nobody shove a USB stick anywhere to take it to David. Please write him a you letter. Know?
<laughs> it's but it's a lot Files less and cakes. A lot Something. less intrusive, but um, Comrade Misty reached out to, <laughs> to Kathy originally to see if she had any information the other day on how how we could write to David in prison, and she pointed him to a web. She pointed us to a website which included information, no prisoner number. Sleepy Josh said, "Let's please send David some mail." And we had an update to this just before we went live. Misty posted at nine twenty one. Earlier tonight, posted to David's YouTube page that, Hi everyone, David here. Team David, of course. First, our deepest thanks to all the support that David's channel has received in the last week in response to recent videos. We've kept David's family informed about it, and they're blown away to say the least. David will get updated about it in the coming days. The image you see is the actual prison cell that David is now confined to. If you'd like to send a letter, here's an address. That's up on screen now. Unfortunately, no unboxing videos. Uh, some guidelines set by the staff. Letters only. No glitter or glue. And no abusive material. The prison staff mm. do review everything, and it will be thrown out if you do put anything abusive. His greatest need right now is to raise funds for mm. his appeal. So please donate a few bucks if you can. So, like, I couldn't... No. I couldn't call the guard watching over him a piece of shit. That's not allowed. That probably wouldn't be beneficial to him either. Just a guess. And that the judges are dickheads. Well, didn't put that in there either. Well, Judge Mossop is a is a mm. is a is a pedophile, rapist, apologist, creeper, scumbag. But that's yeah. a fact. That's not that's not All putting anything inflammatory. That's just right. stating fact. It's not a, it's not abusive. That is just stating facts. Right. Right. Um. um we know many of you have a lot of questions, especially given the complexity of David's case. There are a few moving parts. We hear you. We are working on some content that will help explain help to explain things in more detail. His book, The Nature of Honor, also outlines his background and will and the lead up to his decision to go public. You can just, um, guess and get that on Amazon, but directly at Penguin.com. Again, you'll find this um, Misty link this in her Twitter, so you can go to Misty's Twitter. Can't thank everybody enough, yep. and uh, we we I mean, of you course could, you could ask you could ask the the guards maybe to get him more cigarettes. I don't know, a couple of extra ramen packs, something, you know. Um, treat him well. Hmm. Nice. Interesting. Um, uh, yeah. You know, don't 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 lock his cell that well. You know. <laughs> um judge worm yep so anyway um shit man david mcbride um i i wish him all the best yeah. it's garbage the way they did this the judge said and by the way misty did a live stream on tuesday night after the the verdict and and after the sentencing and she went through like all the reasons why it's bullshit and the judge basically said, yeah. you know, normally two years is a long sentence, but we basically want to make a lesson. We want to make an example out of you. That's, you know, let's, let's go back for a second. That is the jail cell, by the way, that he's staying in. Okay. All right. So, well, love, love to everybody that can help. If you can't, if you can't help, totally understand. Watch, enjoy the content, share it, please, so that other people see it. Um, just like Kit, you know, if you can pick up a monthly subscription, awesome. You can one time pay us and hook us up with some some cash. Amazing, really appreciate it. But we do this, and we we make all our content available for free. Everything we do. So uh, love y'all. Support independent media. We need it more than ever. Thank you. I love you, and I will see you soon. Yeah. Bye, have a great time.